We're back on the Lobo Basketball pregame show at the Pit, New Mexico, and San Jose State coming up for you on the UNM Sports Radio Network. We have Lobo head coach Richard Patino and Coach Patino, uh, reflect back on uh, a signature win. Uh, it, it, you get a chance to play a game like the road trip to St. Mary's. You get to go to number 23, San Diego State, and play in Viejas. These opportunities, they don't come across over 31-game season very often, but what a night for your team. Yeah, uh- you probably know better than I would, but I believe we're five and one away from this building. Um, four true road wins and then the neutral win versus San Francisco. That shows a tough, experienced team. I think our defense, our rebounding is getting much better. Um, they did a great job, our players, of, you know, matching. They, they knew they couldn't beat San Diego State if they didn't get out of their comfort zone and hit people and be physical. And our guys did a great job of that. So, I mean, that's a program when, you know, in year two to be able to go at San Diego State, which is one of the most consistent programs. St. Mary's, one of the most consistent programs. And certainly that's what we're trying to build to. Um, I think it was really important because it almost erased, you're not going to win every game, but it almost erases whether it's UNLV at home or Fresno State. Um, so now you have just an amazing opportunity in the home stretch here of 13 games. And I told our guys this, I said, guys, you know, after 18 games, you got to go all in because you've put yourself in that spot. Um, so when it's time to practice, get better. You know, don't, don't save your legs. Let me save your legs. Trust me in that. When it's time to rest, rest. When it's time to shut it down mentally, do that because we need all hands on deck. Um, and it's been fun. I mean, it's, it's to be sitting here at where we're at in year two is really amazing. I love that. Go all in. Don't let this opportunity slip away. And I guess the reality that's right in front of you now is you've you've gone to win at San Diego State. It's not going to get any tougher than that in conference play. There will be many tough tests, but you know that you've got a chance to win every league game that you play. And that opportunity sits in front of you. It's pretty special. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I've said it many times. If there's a strength that I have as a coach it's I don't get too high and I don't get too low. Um, I try to just stay in the middle as much as I possibly can. And so, although when you're building a program, you need to celebrate wins like San Diego State. You, you know, you need to show recruits about the progress that we're making. You need to, it helps ticket sales and all those things. But internally, you got to flush a great win just like you would a bad loss. And you got to get back to work. Um, the reason why... Some of our guys and most of our guys are very, very confident. It's because they work hard and, and they trust in that work. So um, a great opportunity. The beauty of our league is it's not a one-bid league. Uh, the metrics of a lot of the teams are very, very strong. Um, you know, So you're going to be able to build a resume. And uh, San Jose, obviously, is a great opportunity right in front of us. Littlewood coach Richard Bettino is alongside New Mexico and the Spartans coming up uh, from the pit. So your good friend Tim Miles is across from you, and you guys somehow decided that it would be okay to get mic'd up for this one. What the heck? Yeah, I mean, at the time, um, Steve Shear is a good family friend of ours, and he's a really good producer for Fox Sports 1, and I've got so much respect for him. And he came up to me at the Peach Jam in July and said, hey, you know, he, he was, he was, I was about to go to the bathroom, and he goes, would you do this mic'd up thing? And I said, he goes, I think it really helped you. He said that to me. I said, <laughs> I said, Steve, if you admit that it'll help you, I'll do it. He goes, all right, fine. Uh, it'll help me. I said, done. I said, now can I go to the bathroom, please? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's an added thing uh, for sure. You know, I thought year two, I didn't know if we'd be sitting in the situation that we're sitting in, uh, where we're fighting for a championship, fighting for an NCAA tournament bid. Um, you know, so am I fired up about it? Probably not. But, you know, it, Tim and I are good friends, uh, you know, and, and we're both, we have a sense of humor. I think a lot of coaches don't. Um, but I think we're also pretty respectful during games. So although we joke about it, uh, there may be a couple swear words here and there, but for the most part, I think we're both pretty good. So I'm going to be myself. Uh, I know Tim's going to be himself and uh, coach the team. I've talked to the team a little bit about it, just like, don't change guys. Like, uh, you know, for me, it's hard because you're mic'd up. They're going to be in our locker room, which is a little different. But at the end of the day, like, use it as an opportunity to showcase what you're all about. 
It's also a reflection of where the program has come. Every single one of your league games is on national television. That's not by accident. The fact that you get asked to do this, it tells you that the program is moving into a national position. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I always try to do is if I'm invited to speak at something locally or in the state of New Mexico, I'm 99.9% of the time going to say yes. If if somebody asks me to speak at a clinic, I'm going to try to make it work. It's a privilege to be asked to do these things. Uh, It means that they feel somebody's going to want to listen to what I have to say, um, which is, it's an honor. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, am I, am I like totally fired up about it? Did I create a little extra anxiety for myself? Probably, but <laughs> you know what? It's, it's at the end of the day, like I'm grateful for this opportunity to coach here. I am grateful to be able to play every game on national TV. And I'm grateful that Steve Shearer felt like it would be somewhat good television. Privilege, exactly the word I had in my head. Lobo Head basketball coach Rich Patino is with us in New Mexico and San Jose State coming up shortly. So Amari Moore, um, he had uh, the third ever triple-double in Spartan basketball history against your team in their building last year. You guys split with them. Why is he such a tough cover? Um, Good size, good skill. Um, You know, I I think he's probably intriguing to NBA um, scouts because of his size and his ability to pass the ball as well as get to the rim. I mean, he's probably going to improve his jump shot a little bit. It's not that it's broken, but probably not a natural shooter, which is important. But he's going to have a chance. And um, Tim does a really good job of putting him in kind of kind of like we do with MASH, where we have him drive into his right hand. They get more in a lot of those spots as well. Um, and he just, he puts you in a bind. You know, you put two guys on him, he's going to throw over the top because of our lack of length. Um, they're a really big team, really big team. And I think similar to what we did in year two where you revamp a roster, uh, they've done the same thing as well as be able to like we did with Javante. And obviously E-Man's gotten hurt, but they kept the right guy in Amari Moore and they've built around him. You're right, they're a big team, but one of their smallest guys, their little guard, Cardenas, he can create problems too, can he? I, I like him a lot. Uh, I think, obviously, those are their top two guys, and he's got that European flair to him, um, but he's a good player, you know, and, and, and it's something where he hurt us last year at their place. Um, I was concerned with that game. I didn't think that it's just our program was quite ready to, when you go out to San Jose, there's nobody there, um, and those guys get used to that where we weren't ready for that. So I think we'll be better prepared for it next time around, much like we were San Diego State. Um, but Cardenas is really good. Uh, I mean, they had Boise beat. They beat UNLV. They beat Fresno. So I don't think our fans may have a letdown. Not that our fans are bad, but maybe it's not as big of a name. But I think our guys will be ready to go, and they understand they could beat us. Their seven-foot transfer from Ohio State, Diallo had a nice game against you in their building last year, efficient field goal shooting, seven for 11. Uh, How is he hard to guard? Well, we didn't know he was going to play, and then that was the first game back, and he just plays really hard, and he's big, and, you know, he was coming off a knee injury. Uh, He had a big knee brace on last time we played him, where he seems more healthy uh, this time around. So um, he's a competitor. He's tough. Uh, block shots, uh, plays with a great motor, um, and got great size like everybody on their roster really does. Lowood coach Richard Bettino is alongside. What are the hallmarks of Tim Miles' coach teams? Well, I think he, you know, we're similar in a lot of ways. I think um, he's done a lot longer than I have, but um, we both took tough jobs in the Big Ten. Um, I don't regret it. I don't think he regrets it, but those jobs are kind of what they are. Um, But the bottom line is when you play him, they're going to be very, very prepared. Uh, they've had a lot of time off, so you never know what little wrinkle they'll do. Um, offensively, they're great at getting to the basket. You know, they, they get some movement and they drive downhill. Um, and if you make a mistake, they're going to make you pay. And uh, he's always going to have them ready to go, ready to fight. So uh, we got a great challenge on our hand. You mentioned it's happened a couple of times where your opponent gets a little extra time to prepare for you. They haven't played in a week. Does that scare you a little bit? Uh, I guess no. I mean, coaches probably overthink a lot of those things. Um, at the end of the day, like, you know, I we went at San Diego State and night before the game, I just had a feel. We, we had to, an early shoot around time that I just didn't want to get our guys up early. And I said, you know what? We're not going to shoot around. And we played one of the best games of the year. So sometimes you just overthink these things. Um, I know players hate a lot of practice, but the coaches love it. Um, you know, so our guys are 
they're going to go into a stretch here where we're not going to be able to practice as much like San Jose did. We didn't get that week off because we added the Oral Roberts game, uh, but we're playing good basketball. So every team is different, um, but you just got to you got to go see what they're doing and just play basketball. Have to ask this one. It's such an emotional win. The the emotions of Jalen House and his incredible performance, engaging the crowd, 29 points, all those things. If there is such a thing in conference play, this would be a trap game in terms of maintaining the focus and maintaining the energy level. Any concern there? Not really. I mean, I think after 18 games, I, I don't think we haven't brought it in one game. You know, I mean, I think give UNLV credit. I've gone back and watched that game. They made some plays. We just didn't. Even Fresno, I thought we were right there. Maybe the the emotion of being undefeated may have taken over us a little bit. Um, but they've been good. I mean, you know, so be confident. Respect your opponent. Um, play with that great emotion regardless of who you play against. The good part after 18 games is they've played hard in every single one of them. And, and that's all you can ask as a coach. Well, another feather in your cap. Lobos hadn't won in Viejas since 2017. They had a 16-game winning streak in their building. You ended that. Big win against San Jose State tonight. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. Lobo head coach Richard Bettino alongside. We're back after this timeout pregame. It's Lobo Basketball on UNM Sports Radio Network. We're back on the Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino postgame show. Winning entertainment, including simulcast racing, live music, dining the best games, and more. That's the Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino. New Mexico winner. They knock off San Jose State 77-57 to in the legendary pit. UNM continues to dominate the Spartans here, winning the last five straight in this building. And uh, the Lobos all-time in the Duke City are now 12-1 and against San Jose State when they come to Albuquerque. Let's take a peek at some of the individual numbers, and there are a bunch of really good ones on the Lobos side. 20 points for Mashburn Jr., 6 of 13 field, 7 of 8 foul line, 5 boards in 32 minutes for Mash, and it's 40 consecutive games in double figures for Mash. That is fourth all-time in New Mexico basketball history. Lobos get 20 points from Jalen House, 6 of 11 field, 8 of 9 charity stripe, 6 boards, 5 assists, just 2 turnovers in 28 minutes. He was stellar again. Mashburn, by the way, Tracking down the third longest streak ever. Check it. The fourth longest. Currently, he is fifth. So let's make sure we get it right. Mash's streak of five consecutive, uh, excuse me, 40 consecutive games with double-digit points puts him solo fifth. Fourth best all-time, Willie Long. 53 consecutive games between 1969 and 1971. He could get there in the Mountain West Tournament if he keeps his streak going. So Mash with 20, House with 20, 17 for Udeze, his fourth consecutive double-double in his seventh of the year, 17 points, 7-11 a floor, 3 of 4 foul line, 14 rebounds for Mo in his fourth straight double-double. 10 points for K.J. Jenkins, 4 of 6 field, 2 of 4 at the arc in 24 bench minutes. 4 points apiece for Dent and Forsling and 2 for Alec. Amari Moore, game-high score with 24 for the Spartans, 9 of 23 field, 2 of 10 arc, 4 of 6 Charity strike four boards, five assists. Eight points for Diallo and Cardenas, five for Anderson, three for Tolbert. Four for Viola, three for Gorner, and two for the other Anderson. We're courtside in the pit. Lobos win it by the final score of 77-57. to We're joined by Lobo head coach Richard Patino. A unique night with you being mic'd up the entire game, Coach Patino. But first off, congratulations Great win for your team, 77-57 to over San Jose State. Yeah, I mean, I, Eddie's kind of standing over my shoulder. He, he didn't hand me a, a pink slip, so I don't think I got fired. <laughs> you survived? Uh, I think I survived. <laughs> um, it was challenging. Uh, when the game started, I, my fear was I don't want to create any extra pressure for our players. I thought I would be able to handle it, and our guys did a great job of it. Uh, they really did, and, and hopefully it was good television. Hopefully it brought exposure to our program. I, I said it to you, Rob, in the um, pregame. If somebody asked me to do something and they, 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 they feel as though they want me to speak to them, or be, I feel like it's a privilege. Uh, so I didn't really want to do it, but it was good that I did it. But um, I thought offensively in the second half, we were much smarter. First half, we were trying to drive the ball in areas where they were not open, um, and we were way more offensively intelligent in the second half. Our 
defense in the first half was phenomenal. They make you guard. They run a lot of good stuff. So I got a lot of respect for what Tim did, um, has been able to do. That is a good team. And, and there are no easy wins in this league, and, and San Jose is going to win more games. Coach, congratulations. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what was the adjustment in the second half? Um, you held them to 57 points for the game, but it seemed like in the second half uh, you, you made some changes. Yeah, we, we, were, we were going under ball screens, and they were, they were shooting a lot of threes, and we were a little bit concerned with that. Um, so we adjusted to where we were going to fight over and then switch as they got downhill. Um, but they're, they're really tough to guard offensively, and, I mean, Moore is a terrific player. Um, we, we really did a great job of his rebound the basketball. Yeah. So we went over ball screens instead of going under. I thought it was a good adjustment um, and just tried to keep – we tried to – if you help off – on a ball screen on the perimeter. They just skip it and they shoot the three. So we were just trying to t- play two-on-two on, two on those balls. Yeah, I thought maybe you were trying to pitch so Moore wouldn't get to the paint because it seems like every time he got in the paint, something good happened yeah, for Yeah, they, they have good length. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're big. We're, we've obviously talked about that. I mean, we're not that. Uh, but what I thought we did a great job of, we scrapped rebounding the ball. Mash yes. had five. Yes. Housh had six. We needed that because that team is plus 10 in rebounding category, so it was good for us. I thought most at the tone again there with that in that first four-minute segment, just like he did in San Diego, going and crashing the glass early, and everybody kind of followed. It was a team effort tonight. Well, I told the guys they were so locked in on not letting San Diego State throw us around. And my point to them is that's what a championship team does versus everybody, is they set the tone physically so that when you play New Mexico, you say, hey, like when you're going to go offensive rear, you're going to get hit. Um, or if you don't block them out, they're going to offensive rebound. Or they cut hard and physical. So we still got to get better. But when you play great teams like San Diego State, you get better regardless of win or loss. So we learned a lot, and I thought we were physical today as well. Give us a little window into the uniqueness of tonight. The cameras and the, the boom mics were in the locker room and, and there throughout. And, and how did the guys handle that? Could you see anybody acting a little different? What did it feel like there? What was they, it like? It, they were fine. I mean, I, I, I don't love any of that i really don't like i am not one i don't like attention i don't like the camera on me i want it to be on the players but they were very mature with it i just told them i said although it's somewhat centered on me every time a camera is on you my dad used to have an expression film a commercial yourself because we've talked over and over about increasing value and they're able to do that through maturity, through a huddle or whatever, because people are watching. Uh, I thought they handled it well. It, it didn't seem to consume any of the guys. One thing that I thought was really big in the second half, as you guys started to pull away, was the injection. You've been getting it, and then maybe, you know, coming off the ankle, maybe a little less aggressive or whatever. You said, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. Everybody was asking, and you were getting annoyed because they keep asking, is the ankle for KJ okay? And he did what he's been doing. He's knocked, he knocked down shots. He did other things. That injection of offense off the bench was huge. Yeah, I mean, not everybody's going to play great all the time, and the, the opponents have scholarships too. So, you know, <laughs> like everybody kept asking me that, and I'm like, no, he's fine. He's just got to play better. So um, we found him. You know, he's a great shooter. Uh, he was back to kind of the old KJ, and you know how it is when you miss – you miss a game or two, and you're, you're out of practice. You lose rhythm a little bit. So I think he's healthy. Now he's, he's back in the flow a little bit. I know you got to go, but I got to – Mo, four consecutive double-doubles now, seven on the year. He's just been a monster. Why? You know, he's, we talk a lot about Mash's approach. Morris is the same. I mean, it's every day he's all business, and he's rebounding the ball better. You know, that was something I challenged him on. Hey, if you want to – play at the next level and you want to get paid to play you have to rebound the ball as a big guy uh he's been able to do that he can score um a little bit better at the free throw line but he's really really good down low rebounding the basketball boise beat nevada tonight they're on top of the league you get them on friday night it's gonna be fun sure is can't wait thank, thank you, you coach. thanks coach low boy coach richard patino big win over san jose state 77 to 57 final timeout we come back next after this break remember we've got your adjustment of the game coming up courtesy of the joint, our defensive player of the game, courtesy of Theta Point, and a reminder that the UNM Comprehensive Cancer Center has more than 140 board-certified cancer doctors and cancer surgeons who treat every type of cancer. Visit us online at unmhealth.org slash cancer. Thanks to Comprehensive Cancer Center for sponsoring this game broadcast of Lobo Basketball. Next up, we've got Jamal Mashburn Jr. Lobo's win at 77-57 on the UNM Sports Radio Network. Back courtside inside the pit. Post game show presented by Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino rolls on. New Mexico 77, San Jose State 57. Thank you, yep. Final. 
A uh, little congratulations for Jamal Mashburn Jr. from the opposing head coach, Tim Miles of San Jose State. And Mash is with us courtside. Mr. Mashburn, congratulations. That was a nice win for you. Thank you, sir. Very good win. Very good win. Yeah. Mr. Consistency, you do it again tonight, 20 more points, and um, you're going to be bummed about the missed free throw all night, aren't you? <laughs> I, <laughs> I really am. I'm going to be yeah. kicking myself. I mean... I mean, I shot well from the line today, but it's just, you know, I, you know, I'm gonna be, I always try to be perfect. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to be perfect. You know that. <laughs> you know no, that. you know, you, you've got it on the offensive end, but I'll tell you, a lot of people don't pay attention to enough is your defense. You know, you, you drew more tonight. Uh, he's six six, but you're able to stay in front of him and, and defend him. I, you know, although he scored all those points, look at his percentages. I mean, he was two of ten from three, mm -hmm. nine of twenty three from the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought a lot of that was because of your defense staying in front of him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I take pride in that end. I mean, I, I want to see the best players. You know, I want to see myself, uh, match myself up and see what I can do. And, uh, you know, I work, I work hard for that, and yeah. I think, I, you know, I have the right to do that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, he definitely played well today, though. I know he shot bad, but he played well. That's a good player right there. Yeah. But, I, but I'm hoping to see, at, you know, all the best players in the conference. So, What got into Mo? I mean, mm. Mo was great the first month and a half, mm. but now there's not a single board out there that he doesn't think he can get. What happened? We're always in his ear about, man, you need to be, you should be a double double guy every night. I mean, he should be, and he and he's he has the the talent to do that and the work ethic to to go out there and play hard to get those rebounds. And same with Josiah, actually. And uh, you know, our bigs definitely, you know, they help us out so much, and he he helps us out tremendously. Open up the paint. Um, getting outlets, defensive rebounds, offensive rebounds, which is what he did really well today too. So, um, man, he's a valuable part. And he's, you know, what he's able to do is when, when you guys are deficient on defense, when the guy does get by you, oh yeah, he's, he's protecting the he's rim. He's there, man. Yes, he's, he's there. He walls up and uh, takes it in the chest, blocks the shot, and uh, yeah, he plays hard, man. I, I love Morris, man. Love him. Seriously, you guys are in his ear about it. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, he he should be out there dominating the opposing big every single time, and he has that. He has that ability. He has that talent. Yeah. We in his ear all all day about that. Yeah. All day. I, that's leadership right there, yes. huh? Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you know, because Mo, I feel like he's kind of your alpha on the team. Um, he's he's willing to take that. Yeah. You know, I mean, guys can tell him something. You know, it's not like he's above any criticism or or suggestions where you guys are trying to make him better make the team better and he's open to that oh he is definitely open to that and he does the same with us you know we're yeah. all open to it i mean just we we, we have a, a big trust with this group um with this older group the older guys and yeah we were able to talk to each other and you know uh, pick pick stuff out and uh really get better and that, that's just a testament to our maturity of this and you group. could see it yeah it comes out mm -hmm. we could see it as you when play. you start to work and it looks like you're thinking about one of those pull-up masterpieces is it is there any piece of it that's recognition of who's guarding you? Because sometimes I feel like you're going up over that 6'6 six, six guy, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah. And then you dot it. Like, yeah. are you aware, or is it just like – there's a it's a feeling there's a little space how do you, how do you decide where to go um i mean i would say i'm aware i mean i think uh you know i work on my game so much to where i'm confident that i'm gonna get it off against anybody so if they're six 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 eight i played against that so it's just now it's just getting the reps and just you know getting to my spots and really just i've gotten to my spots all of my career and i think uh you know now i'm a little bit more efficient with it and um you know, so I, I think as a, a part of it is the awareness of who's guarding me, and then another is just is just really just feel, just feel. Juicy one Friday night, Boise yeah. State beat Nevada. We they're need, six and one. That. Boise's at the top. Yeah, I saw that. We need that one. I mean, they're a great team. They beat us at our place uh, last year, uh, so we we, we got to owe them back. We got to owe them back. I, I'm not. I don't want to overblow it, but you guys have talked about uh, this kind of being a, a a year where you guys are. You've come back. You're, you're better equipped. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is that a real thing? That's a real thing for sure. I tweeted that out uh, right when we lost uh, in Vegas. Uh, when we lost in, uh, in the in the Mount, in, uh, in the Mount West tournament. So I mean, I think uh, you know, there's definitely a year of the get back year of just these teams that you know got us last year. You know, we we ready. You were ready this year. I mean, we we were bringing it all. So we want it all. So yep. <laughs> stack it. All right. Yep. Friday yep. night. Friday night. We'll be. Yeah. Y'all be there. Thanks so much, Mo. Nah, uh, thank you. Mash. Nah, Congratulations. Nah, thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate great, you. Great, great night, Mash. Appreciate you, man. Right, man. Appreciate you. Friday. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jamal Mashburn Jr., unbelievable performance as always. Um, okay, uh, we got some things to do here. It's our last segment, so let's get right to it. Today's adjustment of the game, it's brought to you by The Joint, the official chiropractor of the athletics uh, program here at UNM. And thanks to The Joint for their support. Uh, I think we know what the adjustment was tonight, Hunter. Go ahead. <laughs> we heard it from Coach Patino. 
Okay. I, so, <laughs> the, 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 in terms of the way that they decided to guard in the second half. Which is being more aggressive. With the ball screens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. come on top. I exactly. mean, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, because the the guys, they were afraid that they might get hot, although they didn't shoot the ball well from the three. Just come on top and play on top of the ball springs. Exactly. Exactly. They were, they were going under in the first yeah. half, getting looks. They yeah. didn't go, but it was scary because that, che- that team can shoot the three. Yeah. yeah. No, any team. I mean, you know, it, it, they can get hot, but I thought the Lobos did a great job of guarding tonight. I mean, I mean they held them to 57 points. And that's a good scoring basketball yes. team. They average almost 70 a game. Okay, time for our defensive player of the game. It's brought to you by Theta Point. Make cybersecurity a team sport. Add Theta Point to your team to increase your defensive posture. And go get it from him again. Udeze rejects the dribble drive by Cardenas. Loose ball to Moore. Two to shoot. Cardenas with a floater. Short air ball. And a turnover. Lobos with a great defensive possession. Yeah, team-wide defensive possession to get a shot clock violation, but that Udeze block shot. Morris Udeze is your Theta Point defensive player of the game. What about his performance tonight, Hunt? Oh, he's solid. I mean, he. I think, you know, his teammate Mashburn talked about how his potential, he, he can be and should be a double-double player. Love that. We gave you the final Boise State 77-62 to over Nevada there atop the league. Right now, the Broncos at 5-1, and one, Nevada dips to 5-2. and two. Remember, San Diego State only has one loss as well, but they've played one fewer game. They are 4-1. and one. Elsewhere, Utah State wins at home over UNLV, 75-71. to 71. And final in Colorado Springs, Air Force 82, Wyoming 74. Air Force now 3-3 three three in league, and Wyoming 0-6. Oh the Falcons, they're going to be a tough out everywhere. This season. That'll do it for us, yeah. I cannot wait for Friday night, yeah. man. Hey, get some rest. It's a late one. Late one, and come in full throat, Lobo fans, and pack this place. Really good crowd tonight. 11,519. Yeah. Let's no, push it even higher. Let's yep. push it through the roof. Friday night, 9 p.m., national television, first place on the line. Be there. Love it. Okay. For Hunter Green, my broadcast partner, my on-site engineer, Michael Carlisle, and Bob Walpo. Our producer engineer in the studio, I'm Robert Portnoy. That'll do it for us for tonight. The Lobos with the victory. They improved to 17-2 and 4-2 and and in league and separate themselves from San Jose State into solo fourth place in the Mountain West, pending all the action, of course, elsewhere around the league. San Jose State with the loss. They dropped to 12-7 and 3-3 and three and three in conference. Final score for the final time. New Mexico wins it over the Spartans. UNM 77 San Jose State, 57. Stalling everybody. This has been Lobo Basketball on the UNM Sports Radio Network.